All right, in 27, we're told that the positive variables P and C change with respect to time. And the relationship between P and C is given by the equation P squared is equal to 20 minus C all to the third power. At the instant when dP over dt equals 41 and C equals 15, what's the value of dC over dt? Okay, so this is uh, gonna be kind of be like a related rates problem if you remember those ones. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna differentiate this, we're gonna differentiate this equation with respect to t. So we're gonna have 2p times dp dt is equal to, using the chain rule here, you'll have three times 20 minus c to the second power times the derivative of the inside, which would be negative one, or you can say negative one times dc dt. And we can let's 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 um let's isolate this for um dc over dt. So we're just gonna we're just gonna divide by this whole thing. So we'll have two p over negative three times twenty minus c squared times dp dt on the left is equal to dc over dt. Okay, so now we just simply have to plug in 41 for dB dt, 15 for C. And to find P, we can just plug in 15 into this equation and solve for P here. So let's solve for P first. So when P is 15, or sorry, when, when C is 15, you're gonna get P squared equals 20 minus 15 cubed. So we get P squared is equal to five cubed or 125. So P is the square root of 125. And I'm gonna go down here so there's more room. So plugging in the square root of 125 for P, we got two times the square root of 125 over negative three, 20 minus C or 20 minus 15, because that's what C is. 20 minus 15 is five. Five squared, will be 25. DB, D, DP, DT is 41. So this whole thing times 41, this will be equal to DC, DT. And we probably just got to simplify this a little bit. So let's see what we can do. We can, uh, so we can, we can break this up into, um, the square root of 25 times the square root of five times 41 over negative 70, whoops, over negative 75. This will be five. So two times five times 41. Times the square root of five. Reducing this, um, you can break 75 into um, negative 15 times five. So these fives cancel. Whoops. These fives cancel. And then um, you get 81 root five. over negative 15 is equal to dc dt. Or whoops, no, negative 82, negative 82. So let's see what we got here. Okay, so the answer will be D. All right, 28. Find the limit as x goes to negative infinity of three plus two to the x over four minus five to the x. Okay, so this is gonna be three plus two to the negative infinity over four minus five to the negative infinity. 
Now, this is essentially this. This is essentially you know three plus one over two to the infinity over four minus five. Oh, sorry, four minus one over five to the infinity. Now, what's going on here is that you're gonna have a very, very big number in the denominator. So one over a very, very, very gigantic number, this goes to zero. And same thing here, one over five to the infinity is like one over a huge number, so that goes to zero. So what you're basically left with is just three over four, because these are just zeros. So then your limit will be three fourths. So the answer will be C. Okay, so you're given um, the graphs of G, which is gonna be this curved line and the line Y equals X. And the intersect is zero, zero, one, one, and two, two. Zero, zero. One one and two two, which is the following gives the area enclosed by the graph. So we want we want to find an expression for this area and this area. Add it together. Now the um the common way to do this is you break it into two integrals. This first integral will be from zero to one. And we do the top function minus the bottom function. The top function here is C. So you got G of X. The bottom function here is X. So G of X minus X, DX. That'll be for this first portion. Plus this integral, and that'll be from one to two. The top function switches, it becomes X. Then this becomes X minus g of x to find that to get that area dx that's typically the way you'll do it in if you in um like if when you learn this stuff and usually near the end of your calculus course so then we know that um let's see we know that that three would be true now um uh, another way to kind of you know think about this is if you're talking about the difference um you know because let's see so you remember you have an area below the x function here and then the x function here you know Now, another way you can um another way you can tactically do this um and, and not that I would advise it is that this is just going to be you know the absolute difference of those functions. So, not the absolute difference of the the entire integral, but like remember this is some number and this is some number, so it doesn't really matter. Again, like if you took like for example if you took five minus four, you would get one. Now, if you took four minus five, you get negative one. But if you were to say these could be equivalent if you do the absolute value of five minus four and the absolute value of four minus five, because the absolute value of four minus five is positive one, because and this is positive one. So these would actually be equal. So when you think about it like that, it doesn't matter which one you put first when you just think of absolute value as just a difference. So number two would actually work too, but not, not one. So your answer will be two and three. So it'd be D. All right, last one. A student attempts to solve the differential equation dy dx is equal to x times y cubed with the initial condition that y equals two and x equals zero. The steps of the student solution are shown below. Which of the following steps does an error first appear? All right, so let's go through this. Okay, so first step, you would um, multiply the right by dx and divide divide each side by y cubed. 
So you can get like one over y cubed dy, multiply the right by dx, integrate. So this one's okay. Now here, now this is be the same as y to the negative three dy. This is not going to be the the, the, the antiderivative of this won't be the the natural log of the absolute value of y cubed. You just you can use you can just use the reverse power rule. It would be y to the negative two over negative two. So the, so the first error is here in step two. Step two would be wrong. So your answer is simply number two. All right, and we're done with the multiple choice section.